I'm Jess from Threadless. I'm certainly, I'm not as cool as, Char as Charlie Festa, but I'm going to try to be for sure. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the evolution of our Pinterest uh, contest that we've been doing on, uh, no, our Valentine's Day contest we've been doing on Pinterest for the past um, three years. I have some, you know, metrics and stats for you guys, but mostly it's going to be about the mechanics of the challenge and how we actually worked on it in internally, what we saw and what we, what, what we evolved and what we liked. Um, and I don't have some of the speaker notes because I spilled coffee twice all over them. So, oh, and this is what I need. Uh, nope, did it? Yeah. Oh, this way? Yes, all right, through the first slide. So at its base, Threadless is a t-shirt company. We sell, we sell graphic t-shirts on the internet. But the way we source those designs is, is what makes us unique. We have an international community of artists and fans um, that uh, submit, so, oh, this way, I keep pointing the wrong way. Oh, that submit the design. So anyone, anywhere, literally in the world um, can submit designs and they submit on a template and then they're scored on the, on the site, but, oh man, okay, got it. Um, they're scored on the site um, by anyone, anywhere. Again, anybody can sign up an account for Threadless and uh, score the designs one through five. They rise to the top. We take a look at what people are liking, and those are the ones that we um, sift through to print. Those artists are, are paid, sometimes in bulk, sometimes by a royalty model. And we promote not only their design and sell their design, but we promote them as artists um, on T-shirts, sweatshirts, iPhone cases, and stuff. So that's a, big, uh, that's a lot of people we're talking to. Obviously, we, want, we have a lot of different audiences. Obviously, we want uh, all the artists everywhere to know about the opportunities on Threadless to to be promoted as an independent artist. Um, we've got a loyal following of forum and, the uh, and scores, the people that actually find those, uh, sift through those designs for us. Um, uh, and then we've got people that just want the t-shirts. They don't necessarily want to be involved in that beginning process. They just want to keep coming back because we have pop culture designs and, and, and a lot of art. Um, and obviously people just find us through Google, uh, Google as well when they're just looking for fun t-shirts. We've done a lot of design challenges and, and grow, grown our community that way. I'm probably going to get sued for putting those two big logos next to each other, so shh. Um, and then, um, of course, we're an international audience. We're full of all kinds of um, different nationalities and, and languages, which is really fun. So with all those audiences, it really helps that we're a very visual brand. So we share, um, we, sh we post at least new six, or six new designs every week. So that's a lot going on, not to mention if we do like a, co a collection, we'll be in the middle of the week. So there is constantly something being launched, which can be overwhelming. We have to be m moving, we don't get to plan ahead as much as I really wish that we did, but there's a lot going on. And, um, but the visuals are, are an easy thing to share. Obviously, we all know visual, visual stuff works. And since its inception, Threadless has been um, really good at kind of portraying, first of all, this is, I have gotten more better photos of myself than I have ever in my life working at Threadless, and I will use this, pre this photo in every presentation until the day I die. <laughs> but um, all the employees model, uh, all model the t-shirts, not just because we're launching so much, but because it's fun, and we want to seem kind of more human because our community is full of people trying to engage with us, so we want to engage right back. I mean, a fan and everything. Um, we have to go. Okay, so um, Craig Shamal has been around since the beginning, and he handles our Instagram account, and he's constantly capturing stuff um, that kind of pr helps promote our culture. So some of this stuff has to do with products, and sometimes it's just when I saran wrap Jeff in the middle of a meeting. So it's just, uh, just, just, just about showing fun. So we do well on some of our other accounts. Instagram, you, you can read, but Instagram about 200,000, 2.19 million on uh, what is that, Twitter, <laughs> and then 850,000 on Facebook. We're still growing our Pinterest page because we are a really small and nimble team. It's basically me and that dude back there um, and, and Craig. So, and we're all responsible for like content creation as well as like pushing it out, which can be overwhelming and sometimes I'm, I just wanted to go home and cry. But it is really, it's a fun place to be. So we're, the Pinterest is growing though because a lot in part to this Valentine's Day contest that we've been doing. So we started in 2012. And obviously, since Pinterest was relatively new, we, our goal for the, for the start of it was just awareness. We wanted people to start posting um, our Threadless, con or know about our page so they can start repinning our content and everything. So we just wanted to make it fun for people, let them know it was there, share it with our existing community on other channels, and hopefully get them over to our Pinterest page. And obviously, we're kind of excited because we do tend to skew male heavy. And obviously, we know Pinterest 
is it tends to be female centric and we have a lot of we have female design or female like uh, t-shirts for every design that we put out like female styles so it was a really great place to find that audience so awareness uh, oh man sorry Am I, if I'm speaking too fast I really can't help it I'm from Philadelphia um, so this is the way that, it, that it, basically this is how the challenge works and we evolved it over the years but everyone had to have a, a Pinterest board that they dedicated to someone that they wanted that they loved and wanted to shower with affection and gifts so this didn't just have to be like a significant other it can be mom sisters whatever so they had to have 10 pins and only five of them had to be threadless products because we wanted people to dig in and make it and make it real um, for for this person not they don't want to give someone 10 t-shirts for Valentine's Day probably so um, and then the pricing was a hundred dollar threadless gift code and a hundred dollar Amazon gift code to get that other stuff um, and that's really to run a whole challenge two hundred dollars at the end of the day didn't seem like that much for us so we were we were really happy to see that we got um, 366 boards which to us was really good because it is a it's a high barrier to entry it's not just you know liking a page but it's you know posting 10 pins describing describing what those pins mean who that person is to you um, we put a real emphasis on telling us why that you know that person is important to you but also why that product um, mean means something about or means something to them or your relationship with them so the good thing is I just took these grabs a few weeks ago and these are all to, like some of the 2012 boards so even though Pinterest works in a news feed and only the new pins go into the board as long as these people are still active um, on Pinterest people might get to their profile and see these boards are still up we do a lot of reprints so many of the designs that they pinned are still available on Threadless so that was good um, oh I gotta read this part sorry got my papers out okay so this is one I particularly liked um, this is the description that's at the top this board is dedicated to especially to my sister whom I hardly tell I love you but I do when we're not fighting she's busy a giving me good advice B making me look good in front of my relatives C good naturally being the butt of the jokes and overall just being the greatest big sister in the world so obviously it's easy to talk I know, I know. Um, it's easy to talk it's easy to talk uh, nicely about your your sister but what we saw was that trickle-down effect and what we really liked into our product so people were for were really talking in a unique way about an existing product that's made for everyone but they were like this is why this means something to my relationship so Oh, I still need to read stuff. Okay, so underneath the, the image, the cookie loves milk image, can, you can see that because it's a screen. Um, it says, we go together like, just like milk and cookies. And then um, the dinosaur hugging the giraffe, uh, you're your own person, but we still laugh over the same things. And then you can't see the, the aspirational photo of the unicorn, but that's a rhinoceros on a treadmill with the aspirational photo of the unicorn, like he was gonna get skinny like a unicorn. Um, and that says, we share, I know I love that too much. Um, we share our weight woes, but in the end, we're always, we always decide not to care because we are loved just the way we are. And that's, it's a great way to have consumers kind of indirectly or directly talking about your product. So we really, really like that emotional component. And we think it has a lot to do with um, you making a board for someone else because you want, you want them to be honored, you know? So uh, we were happy with that. And, oh, I, oh, oh that was what, that's how you were going to see the stuff closer. So, there were 366 submissions and I cried, but not after crying about what I had done to my email inbox. Um, <laughs> obviously, we named them all Threadless V-Day Challenge and, and, uh, so that we could find the boards, but we didn't want to rely on the kind of relatively new platform, so we wanted to make sure that people had another way to submit and we, that we didn't want anyone to waste their time and us not even look at their board. So I, that was hard and I cried a lot. Um, so the next year we definitely changed how we, how we did that. And reading through 366 was fun, but it was, it was a big time con consume. Big t it t took a lot of time for someone, <laughs> for a small team. I mean, come on, I'm just winging it. Um, just kidding, just kidding. All right, so um, in 2013, because like I said, it was a high barrier to entry, we didn't expect to see like a way to make the, without the prizing getting bigger, we didn't see a way to make the submissions soar, but we wanted to figure out a way to get more people to look at every board submission that was posted. So that was one of our goals, was more eyeballs in each submission, and um, then less time for our team. So those kind of work together when, oh, why can't I figure this out? Okay, um, those kind of work together when we added the stipulation that we'll choose from amongst the most shared boards. So we didn't just do most shared board wins because we didn't want to lose that emotional component. 
So we kind of narrowed it down to the top 20, but we're still looking at the way people describe things and you know what, what made us kind of feel the tear jerkers. Um, and then this time, I mean, I've been pushing buttons my whole life. I don't know why I can't figure this out. Um, this time we had everyone submit in our blog, uh, our forum on site. So every time someone does that, it bumps that particular thread to the top of all the forums on Threadless. So it was a way to keep or either show new people or keep reminding people that this challenge was going on. By the way, this challenge ran for a week. I forgot to tell you that. Um, so that worked out really well. We were happy to see about the same amount of responses or amount of submissions, but a lot more followers per on particular boards. So if you look at some of the boards from 2012, those boards it's still now only have about four followers, but it, um, some of the higher, higher followed boards in 2013 had literally hundreds more. So more people were looking at our products, which is always great. And like I said, we have a lot of reprints, so those boards staying up is really good for us. <sighs> Sorry. Um, okay, so in 2014, we felt like this was, we definitely wanted to do it again. We were seeing that different audience that we don't always get to engage with on Threadless, um, but we wanted to incorporate it now that we'd saved a little bit of time on, from our team's end. We wanted to incorporate into a larger content strategy that, um, that, that maybe we could do some other executions on different platforms. So this year, we worked with, uh, I worked with our content manager to come up with our content social strategy for the year. Um, we, we did what everybody did. You look at what's doing well, what you want to be, how you want to be perceived. We came up with our narrative, which is Threadless supports, inspires, and informs the community through creativity, interaction, and exposure to the art world. Which, which is great, and that's the message we want everyone to know about, but what, the, what, what I was most excited about is we discovered we could use this line to create a tool for, for everybody across departments to share and brainstorm ideas together, kind of independently. So we took the three skills of, oh man, uh, the three skills of Threadless, supports, inspires, and informs. Supports being raising those artists up, sharing them, recognizing the, uh, them as independent artists. Inspires, um, this could be anything from like having a design challenge theme to get to spark some interest. Um, and informs, which is kind of sourcing, uh, no, sorry, informs, which is both sharing the news of Threadless and the news of just the art world in general. And we kind of match that against um, our three kind of, way, kind of ways we execute that, which is creativity, interaction, and exposure. Creativity being stuff we actually make. So interviews with artists, images, maybe interviews. Interaction being that conversation we have with our community and exposure, sourcing existing material and sharing that with the world. And we made a kind of a, a content grid. So this is kind of a brainstorm bank that everyone that's working on any particular launch or product will, will, will be shared. We use Google Docs. So it will be shared on Google Docs and everybody can think of ideas that they think, is, they think are cool to execute from a content or social perspective on these ideas. And what's, what helped us with this is we got to see if we were doing too much of something not executing on something else, um, and, and let us figure out different ways to do the same thing without you know, doing the same old thing. So, and from a general band perspective, I don't know, where, where am I at time? Do I have time? Okay. So, an example of support by creating would be video interviews with artists, because we're, we, we're supporting artists by creating something. Informed by exposing could be cat gifts to get people, I know we love animals in this room. Um, inform. <laughs> Informed by exposing could be cat gifts to get people excited or tease a new cat launch or something, or even inspired by interacting could be submit, uh, creating an original characters challenge so people uh, get excited about a new theme or uh, spark that idea. So we created um, a Valentine's Day grid and figured out where our Pinterest strategy, or, our, or sorry, our Pinterest challenge worked into that. For that, that's informed by interacting because we're actually asking people to to engage with us and do something and share the news of Threadless. Um, but we were able to do two extra things um, this year that filled in some of the other boxes. So we had, on Instagram, we had people use the hashtag together and pose with someone else in a Threadless t-shirt, hugging or whatever, being cute. Uh, there I am again. Um, and that falls under inspired by interacting because we tend to think of Threadless t-shirt style as a way to inspire other people and how they can kind of upstyle their tees, wear a t-shirt with a blazer maybe. Um, and then, believe it or not, this hunky meme does fall into our strategy. Th this was for Twitter and Tumblr. This one says, 
Hey girl, my heart's a Twitter for you. Happy Valentine's Day. Hey girl, I'm, um, I'll tumble, I'll Tumblr for you. Happy Valentine's Day. But um, we're also highlighting uh, one of our artists' new newest designs. So that also was launched on Valentine's Day, and that goes under um, informed by creating. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at right now uh, with this challenge or with this Pinterest challenge, and we hope to do it again this year and, and receive the same kind of response. So just as kind of takeaways, incorporate, or in the, the first time we did it, we incorporated an emotional component that got people talking about our products in a unique way. And that we learned that pricing doesn't really have to break the bank. So every year this is just $200 um, of our social budget. And 100 of that is just a gift code, which somehow the, its value is a little bit less. In 2013, um, we maximized the shares and got more people to look at these products and these boards without losing the emotional component by saying, choose amongst the most shared boards. And we made it competitive by it, uh, making it public, making all the submissions public in the blog. And in 2014, we saved some time and were able to incorporate it into a larger content plan. And then in 2015, there's two things that we've kind of done before, but we need to press on this year. And I didn't, the reason we haven't done some of this is we didn't want to have so many things for people to have to do, but we printers have to follow the threadless handle when they post and uh, we'll repin the winning boards to our page. And I'm sorry, I hope you guys heard that because I know I was talking kind of fast. Um, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, am I supposed to read any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Well, yeah, one thing I didn't mention, mention um, we did have people also on their board, they had, I, th I think we only did this two of the three years, but they had to pin um, the actual image of the contest banner. So it said, pin, like, pin it to, for love or show some, so show some love or something like that. So they did have to um, tell people that it was a contest, which sometimes makes it more OK for other people to see it, just to understand why you're pinning so many things, I guess. I know that we got some from our existing community. Oh, that was the question was, were these new community members on our Pinterest board, or did we get them from our other platforms? I know that some of them were from our existing community, because those are the people that get really heavy into the blogs. But just, um, I don't have the exact numbers for you, but when we could see new emails or new user signups, we knew that was part, in part due to people just being, a, just being new to the Threadless community. There was no paid media. So we, li we only paid for the prizing. I mean, we also put it in email and put it on our other social and on the blog, so I guess we kind of pay for email stuff. But for the most part, it was a $200 prizing um, kind, of, kind of challenge. Any other questions? OK. Thanks, guys. <laughs>